In this video lecture, we're going to learn about the reaction of ammonium salt plus base, which produces salt, water, and ammonia. So we're going to learn how to make an equation for that. Now, before beginning, we first need to understand what an ammonium salt is. Remember, salts were produced when an acid was neutralized. For example, if you had HCl, and if you're, if you're going to neutralize the acid, you're going to get rid of this hydrogen ion and replace it with any other positive ion available. So, so uh, to make a salt out of HCl, neutralize the acid, get rid of the H, and substitute that H with any other positive ion. For example, you can substitute it with sodium ions, and if you substitute it with sodium ions, it's going to become NaCl. So that is one of your salts. Na is plus one, Cl is minus one. So this is the formula. Now, if you neutralize an acid, you get a salt. You can replace it with any other positive ion. So if you replace that H plus one with an ammonium ion, let's say this time I'm substituting the H plus one with an ammonium ion, then you get an ammonium salt. And since NH4 is plus one, Cl is uh, minus one, so the charges would cancel out. So we can we can rub the charges off. The overall ch overall charge on this uh, ammonium salt would be zero. So we can we can make uh, come up with a number of ammonium salt. For example, if you had let's use another acid. Let's say I have sulfuric acid H2SO4, and if I neutralize this acid, I will get a salt. So I need to get rid of this H, and if you substitute that H plus one ions with ammonium ions, you're going to get an ammonium salt. So instead of that H plus, I substitute that with NH4 plus. And SO4 is two minus. And using the crisscross method, this uh, formula would be, there would be two ammonium ions and one sulfate ion. So I can, I can remove the charges now. The overall charge would be, it's going to be zero. So this is an ammonium salt. So let's uh, think of another ammonium salt uh, uh, by thinking of another acid, let's pick phosphoric acid, which is H3PO4. And if I do the same, neutralize this, get rid of the hydrogen ions and substitute it with positive ammonium ions. So let's do that. Ammonium is NH4. The charge on it is one plus, and PO4 is three minus. So the formula using the crisscross method is going to be there would be three ammonium ions and remove the charges. The overall charge on ammonium phosphate is going to be zero. So you can you can come up with a number of different salts using a number of different acids. Simply get rid of the hydrogen ion, substitute it with positive ammonium ions. Get rid of the hydrogen ion, substitute it with positive ammonium ions. So so let's write down all the ammonium salts. Uh, we've already written down uh, three ammonium salts. Uh, you can have ammonium carbonate that would also be an ammonium salt or ammonium nitrate so that would be in its 4NO3 so uh, use many you can use any different as acid and you can come up with an ammonium salt so so the list is unlimited pick any acid neutralize it get rid of the H ions and substitute it with ammonium ions you're going to get an ammonium salt. So all these ammonium chlorides, ammonium sulfates, ammonium phosphates, ammonium carbonates, ammonium nitrates, they're all uh, ammonium salts. Another thing that needs to be remembered about ammonium salts is that ammonium salts are acidic, which means that they're capable of producing H plus one ions, which is why ammonium salts are reacting with bases in the first place. So all ammonium salts uh, have this ion in them. They have NH4 one plus ion and this one this ion is the one that is acidic which basically means That it's capable of producing H plus one ion. So when it loses an H plus one ion It ends up producing Ammonia gas which is why you're seeing these ammonia gas molecules in the product because ammonium salts uh, the ammonium ion would tend to produce H plus one and it would tend to produce ammonia gas. So what's happening in the reaction is that you have an ammonium ion and it would be reacting with, let's say, an alkali. An alkali has OH ions and they would end up, in its 4 plus 1 would uh, lose an H plus 1 and that H plus 1, the H plus 1 that it loses goes and attaches to the OH minus 1 and they uh, combine to form water molecules. So a neutralization reaction occurs the H plus one from ammonium ions and the OH ions from the alkalis 
they react to produce water molecules and ammonia gas is produced as a result so this is the ionic equation for the above reaction if an ammonium salt reacts with an alkali producing water plus plus ammonia so remember remember that ammonium salts are acidic acidic which is the reason why they're reacting with bases in the first place lastly we're going to talk about bases uh bases uh, I previously told you were compounds that accept H plus 9. So by definition, bases uh, are proton acceptors. So uh, the compounds that are classified or categorized as bases were metal oxides and metal hydroxides. And when we talk about alkalis, alkalis are those bases that are soluble in water. So don't get confused with uh, the terms bases and alkalis. Uh, they pretty much mean the same thing, except for the fact that if you, if there's a base that dissolves in water, then that would be called an alkali. So, so bases are metal oxides, metal hydroxides. They're capable of accepting H plus one ions. So to sum it up, an ammonium salt is an acidic salt. So it produces H plus one ions, whereas a base is capable of accepting H plus one ions, which is why you're going to have a neutralization reaction producing salt and a water molecule. And ammonia gas would also be produced as a result. So I'm now going to try and write my first reaction. So I'm picking uh, ammonium nitrate. Let's pick ammonium nitrate, which is NH4NO3. That's my ammonium salt. So it's ammonium nitrate reacting with a base. So I'm going to pick uh, sodium hydroxide, which is an alkali. It's a soluble base. So it's NaOH reacting with NaOH. And it's going to produce a salt, a water molecule, and ammonia gas. So I'm going to write water and ammonia because they would be produced. So we're going to write down water and ammonia gas. And we're going to try and figure out what the salt is going to be. So if you look at the uh, equation, which is incomplete right now because there's a salt missing. So if you look at the equation, uh, you can figure out that the ammonium ion over here uh, lost its H plus one and that got converted to ammonia gas. So so we can safely uh, remove this particular ion, this ammonium ion, uh, from the equation because that, not from the equation, but uh, from the ions that are going to make the salt because they, that ammonium ion has been converted into ammonia. Similarly, if you look at this uh, OH ion over here, you would notice that this OH ion got converted into water. So, so you can get rid of that OH ion uh, from, the, from the list of ions that are going to make a salt. The leftover ions are sodium ions and nitrate ions. So your salt must be sodium nitrate. It's going to have sodium ions and nitrate ions. Sodium is plus one and nitrate is NO3 minus one. So the formula is NaNO3. So this is how you're going to figure out how the salt is going to be formed in this reaction. Uh, get uh, Think of the ammonium ion getting converted into ammonia gas. Think of the OH ion getting converted into water molecules. The leftover ions are sodium ions and nitrate ions, so they are going to end up forming this salt, which is sodium nitrate. So this is your balanced reaction. This is the first reaction of ammonium nitrate reacting with uh, NaOH, a base reacting with an ammonium salt. It's going to produce a salt, a water molecule, and ammonia gas. Let's try and do the second reaction where you have ammonium sulfate reacting with calcium hydroxide. So calcium hydroxide is a metal hydroxide, so that's a base. Ammonium sulfate is an ammonium salt, so it's the same reaction. Uh, firstly, I'm going to figure out the formula of ammonium sulfate. Ammonium is NH4, 1 plus. Sulfate is SO4, 2 minus. So uh, using the crisscross method, there would be two ammonium ions. So it's ammonium sulfate reacting with calcium hydroxide. Ca is 2 plus, OH is 1 minus. So it's going to be CaOH2 using the crisscross method. So that's your... These are your two compounds, ammonium sulfate reacting with calcium hydroxide. It's a ammonium salt plus base reaction. So water would be produced and ammonia gas would be released in this reaction. So let's write that, write that down. And the last thing we need to do is we need to figure out what the formula of the, of the salt is going to be. So, so do the same thing. The ammonium ions got converted into ammonia gas. The OH ions got converted into water. So the only leftover ions are calcium and sulfate. So you write the positive ion first. Calcium is two plus, SO4 is two minus. So the formula is going to be CSO4. And the last thing you need to do is you need to balance this equation. So 
the two ammonia ions. So there should be two ammonia gas uh, molecules that would be produced in this reaction. So, so there should be two ammonia gas molecules that would be produced in this reaction. Uh, calcium is already balanced. Same is the case with sulfate or sulfur. That's already balanced. Uh, you can count the number of oxygens. There are four and there are two oxygens over here. So that's a total of six oxygens. There are four oxygens over here. There should be two oxygens over here. So there should be two water molecules. So uh, everything is balanced except for hydrogen because everything else is balanced. So hydrogen would automatically be balanced. You can count hydrogen. There are eight hydrogens over here. Two over here. So that's a total of uh, 10 hydrogens on the left hand side. Uh, there are four hydrogens over here and there are six hydrogens over here. So that's a total of 10 hydrogens on the product side as well. In this third reaction, I have ammonium phosphate and it's reacting with magnesium oxide. It's a metal oxide, so that's a base. And this ammonium phosphate is the ammonium salt, so it's ammonium, ammonium salt plus base. Let's figure out what ammonium phosphate, uh, the formula of ammonium phosphate is. NH4 has a charge of 1 plus, PO4 has a charge of 3 minus, so the formula is going to be NH4, 3. Uh, there would be three ammonium ions plus magnesium oxide. Mg is two plus O is two minus, so it's MgO, and it's going to produce salt, a water molecule, and it's also going to produce ammonia gas. So let's write that down first, and let's figure out what the salt is going to be. So if you look at the reaction, the ammonium ions got converted into ammonia, the oxide got converted into water. So the only ions left are magnesium ions and phosphate ions. So they're going to end up forming your salt. Mg is 2 plus and PO4 is 3 minus. So bring the 3 over here and Mg is 2 plus. So there would be two phosphate ions. So using the crisscross method, I've been, I've been able to figure out what the formula of the salt is. And the last thing is I need to balance this equation. So, so to balance this equation, I pick the simplest uh, thing that can be easily balanced. Magnesium, there are three magnesiums. So there should be three magnesiums on the other side so there would be three MGOs uh, there are two phosphate ions over here so there's only one phosphate over here so there should be two molecules of ammonium phosphate that would make it six ammonia gas molecules would be produced and the last thing is we can count the oxygens there are eight oxygens over here there are three over here so that's a total of 11 oxygens there are eight over here and there should be three oxygens on this side so that's also balanced and we can count the hydrogens just to confirm there are 12 hydrogens over here and there are two molecules so that's a total of 24 hydrogens and if you count the number of hydrogens over here there are 18 plus 6 over here that's a total of 24 hydrogens so everything in this equation now is balanced so it's ammonium phosphate reacting with magnesium oxide and it's producing magnesium phosphate a water molecule and ammonia gas Let's do this fourth reaction now, which you, where you have ammonium carbonate, another ammonium salt reacting with potassium hydroxide, which is a metal hydroxide, so that's a base. So we're going to write down this reaction. Ammonium carbonate is, NH4 is 1 plus, and carbonate is CO3 2 minus. So the formula is going to be, using the crisscross method, it's going to be two ammonium ions in the formula. So it's ammonium carbonate plus uh, potassium hydroxide, K is plus 1, OH is minus 1. So potassium hydroxide is KOH and I'm going to write down the product of the reaction uh, they're going to react and they're going to produce water and ammonia gas so that is written first and now I'm going to try and figure out what the salt is going to be so so if you so the OH goes into producing water the ammonia ions uh, they get converted into ammonia gas so you're left with potassium ions and carbonate ions so your salt is going to be K is plus 1, CO3 is 2 minus, so it's going to be K2CO3, the formula of the salt. And the last thing is you need to balance this equation, so we're going to balance this equation. So uh, the two ammonium ions over here, so there should be two ammonia gas molecules, uh, the two potassium ions over here, so there should be two KOH. And we can count uh, the oxygens, there are two oxygens over here and there are three over here, so that's a total of five. There are three oxygens over here, so there should be two molecules of water to have two oxygens. So that's two water molecules. So this equation is now balanced. It's uh, ammonium carbonate reacting with potassium hydroxide, producing potassium carbonate, water, and ammonia. 
I'm now going to show you how this reaction would be carried out in a school laboratory. So you're going to take a test tube, a boiling tube preferably, so that it is resistant to heat and you can heat it because you would need some amount of heat uh, for this reaction to occur. So uh, there's a Bunsen burner at the bottom that's providing all the heat. And an ammonium salt and a base uh, or alkali would be mixed and they would react uh, together. And as soon as they start reacting, they're going to produce uh, ammonia gas. Ammonia gas is produced in the reaction. So, so gaseous fumes of ammonia would be would be produced so you you're going to get ammonia gas molecules a vapor of ammonia gas and to check whether ammonia gas is formed remember ammonia gas is a basic uh, alkaline gas so put a moist red litmus paper and the alkaline ammonia gas would turn it blue so you're going to notice uh, this red moist paper litmus paper turning blue when the reaction occurs so this is how you're going to perform this reaction in the school laboratory and remember it's a it's a test uh, it's also used as a test to identify whether a solution has ammonium ions or not so it's a test for ammonium ions so whenever there's there's a salt containing ammonium ions mix an alkali heat it and test the vapors that are being produced by moist red litmus paper and if if they turn blue that would indicate that an ammonium salt was present in the solution